I'm just saying. I've said on the show before, hell, I'm I petty shit. What's going on, y'all? Oh my God, too funny. Y'all called me and Rick in the middle of a conversation. I told him I was about to pop on. He was telling me I was petty. I don't say that too many times on the show. I know I'm petty. My whole family petty. That's just it's, it's, it's in us. It's who we are. It's not, yeah. At least I know I'm not petty. I don't do it being petty, but I will leave you on red and won't respond. Yeah. I'm not going to respond and don't keep messaging me and then want to know why I ain't responding. That's how you get blocked. Whoop. Nobody got time for that. That's like texting. I don't ask, I don't, you call me, then you text me and I text you right back. And they'd be like, well, why you didn't answer? I'm like, I ain't want to talk to I you. I want to talk to you. I'm like that too. Don't call me out the blue. I hate when people just call me out the blue. Anyway, we, 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 we on a whole nother conversation, y'all. A whole night, Rick. What's going on? Hey, Tara. Happy Friday to you as well. I tell you, y'all, I have been ready for this conversation all day. You see, I apologize ahead of time in the post that said about the soapbox I'm about to get on because y'all already know. Y'all already know, but I felt like I needed to do this show. You know what? I should have. Oh, oh show flip. Yeah, first of all, I got to... Yeah, I should have had it queued up because that clip, that clip says uh, a whole lot. Oh, yeah. And really, if you go and watch the entire show, <clears throat> it's like, wow. Happen now we have become emasculated by design. So like, and don't get me wrong, like back in the day, men weren't perfect either. But as black men now, we've become emasculated. We've been locked up, drugs have been put into the community. Most, and I'm not gonna say most, we're looked upon as being lazy, right? Like the, the media has been really turned against us more on the negative side than the positive side. Absolutely. So what happens now is, we're being inf influenced by the media. We're looking at stuff and the media is giving us a slant on what manhood is. But shows like this are saying, yo, let me give you the opposite side of this. And this is the side that you really need to take. I mean, we kind of touched on that last week because you yeah. said it. Yeah. You said it while we were talking. 
that it was a growing issue, I 100% agree with you that it is. Hold on. Hey, Google, turn volume down to five. Like I'm hearing it in my ear, so it's, it's distracting me. Hey, Dallas, welcome. And so uh, when I saw that that clip, I thought, you know what? This is my sign mm -hmm. that we need to do this show and we need to talk about this because some people may not agree. Everybody has their own yeah. perspective. On it. But I 100% what he's talking about because I see it in on social media I see it on television I see it in all of these different avenues I guess is what I want to, want to mm -hmm. call it because to me it's a systematic emasculation of the black men and so it's not really found in just one place there's a whole lot of contributing factors I feel like yeah. and it really I guess um depends on how you want to how you want to view it um because some people feel like you know no I, I, I had one gentleman say no he doesn't think it's true I guess because he feels like he's never faced it oh, okay. and so just because you don't you've never faced it or dealt with it does not mean that it does not exist. And so I feel like it's really important for people to start having that conversation because the emasculation of the black male is what really driving the emergence of that independent black woman. Mm -hmm. And so the balance is getting offset and in order for us to shift that balance back we have to address it and we have to address the elephant in the room and this to me is the elephant in the room oh. hey Demetria, welcome welcome now i'm gonna let you i'm gonna i'm gonna let you talk great before i jump on my soapbox <laughs> but i do want to say this that tonight while we're discussing this i 100 percent want to make sure that we touch on the role that the black woman is playing in this emasculation it's important that we touch on this okay? but i really want to get that male perspective so, fellas, if y'all out there, I'm going to need y'all to chime in tonight. I really want to get the male perspective on how you're seeing it and what made you even, I mean, because you were talking about it, on, like you yeah. brought it up. Like, oh, it, it was in my spirit. But I guess, you know, I got, I got sons. So I see it from, you know, one just graduated high school. Seeing it, how his teachers, how his white teachers, done him there like you know rick he's he's you know he's too loud he's too forceful and i was like so you want him to cower down to these little white boys you let them say whatever they want to to him but he's not supposed to respond yeah just coming from a white woman and i was like no i said he ain't gonna do it i said you want to put him suspend him or whatever but he's not doing that. You're not going to take his voice away from him. I agree. I agree. So it starts early. They want us. They don't want us to be who we are. I said, you don't have to go around acting like a hoodlum, but you, you, my sons, all of them are respectable. They, you know, they don't get no trouble, none of that stuff. And I know they can get a little loose. You know, I will from time to time. But they're not disrespectful to anybody. So to, to call me talking about, you know, we had a problem with him today in school. 
I get up there. First of all, he can't lie to me because I, I know when he's lying. And you know what your sons and your kids, you know they who they are. Yeah. You know what they will and won't do. And she told me some stuff, and I was like, I said, now maybe it's this other one, but not this one here. So it's, it's all based on people's perspective. Mm-hmm. And I agree. They try to keep especially the young black male mm-hmm. down because if you get it instilled in him at a young age mm-hmm. then you got him tamed right. when he reaches adulthood mm-hmm. and so i agree we need to teach them to be able to respectfully and that's the key mm-hmm. respectfully voice their opinions and make themselves heard but at the same time understand a lot of people ain't like that and you, you're gonna have to be able to recognize that aggression when it comes back right. at you and it's sad that we have to even prepare them for that but you have no choice mm-hmm. and so really it's a thin line and a balance between do we teach them to cower down to save their lives because it may be a life or death situation yeah. Or do we teach them how to respectfully voice your opinion but understand that these people ain't always going to see you the way you see you. right but you know he even knows that even if he respectfully gets his opinion across it's looked at as disrespectful and i'm like i say you can't tell a cop nothing so just whatever you, you you have to it's a hard balance mm-hmm. when when it comes to raising a black male i never had that <laughs> I, I i never had to raise a black male i had all females i know tiger I'm, look tiger at, you can't help why it. are you trying to get over here <laughs> get on somewhere and lay down i never raised any black males okay uh i had all girls but i see the struggle you see it daily, see it daily on TV. But on top of dealing with perspectives of, I'm going to say people of other ethnicities, mm-hmm. I'm going to put it that way. Yeah. I'm going to put it that way. Dealing with the perspective of people of other ethnicities. You also have to take into consideration the role, as I said earlier, of the black community. We got a comment. It says, teach them to communicate properly, along with keeping a lawyer on retainer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ed, I, hey, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with that. Absolutely. Keep them on retainer. It's, it's difficult out here for the black male because you damned if you do and damned if you don't. But also, there's a difference between trying to voice your opinion or uh, protect yourself mm-hmm. and acting a fool. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, and I'm sorry, we acting a fool, yeah. but we want to cry. Y'all don't never, you know, y'all are against us or whatever, but we play into that stereotype yeah. of being loud and unruly and then wonder why we get treated the way we treat it. Because black people even discriminate amongst ourselves. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't do us in big crowds. I tell people that in a minute. <laughs> mm. No. I said, I love my people, but I don't do us in big crowds. No, because I always know there's going to be somebody up in there that's going to act a fool, and I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So if I'm thinking that way about us, (laughs) and I'm one of us, imagine what they think about us. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
you see what they see on TV. Look, look on social media. They always see us fight. You look at it every oh, always fight. And I'm every time I see that damn TikTok Disney World fight, black family fight oh. with the mama in the hub around yeah. and the girl done spit in the brother face and they y'all swinging on me. Everybody fight. Mama done fell out in the street and everything. Hey, I can't take you out nowhere. Now, I ain't saying that white people don't do it because they do. Oh, yeah. It just don't get televised like we do. <laughs> and then people look at us and say, don't, huh? See, I told you. Look, they can't even go to Disneyland. That's what they can't even go to Disneyland. Look how they act. Look how they act. And then we wonder why with the first one that they can kill. I know you did. I know you did. But I guess growing up, I'm sure we fought just as much as them. It just wasn't no cameras around to record. Tara says they aren't scrutinized the way we are. That's for sure. Yeah. No, they 100% are not scrutinized the way that we are. Which makes, like I said, we, we have to be extra aware. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to be aware of how I speak and come across to people because I know I'm viewed as that strong-minded black woman. And I had the angry black woman show. I've even been called the angry black woman. I have to be conscious of that. Yeah, yeah, you do. And I shouldn't have to, because white women get to say whatever they want yeah, and act hey. however they want to. And they'd be like, oh, poor Susie, Becky, oh, you know, <laughs> she a little emotional. But me, oh. I'm angry and I'm aggressive. And so I have to really be mindful mm -hmm. of how I come across. Yeah, I, and it's sad. Sad part about it is, we're so used to it that it's it's an odd. That's who we are. It is. It's that slave mentality. Yeah, they We've got been it. taught that. It's been passed down. Mm -hmm. We have been taught to be passive to them, to help them to understand us, because we have to understand and accept them. Mm. Which goes back to last week's show. Just because I understand don't mean I accept it. I shouldn't have to accept it. But I can only imagine I'm feeling that way as a black people. Because everybody doesn't see me as a threat. Right. That everybody sees y'all as a threat. Yeah, well, yeah. No matter where you whether you are or not, everybody sees you as a threat. So where I'm trying to keep it kind of, you know, except is I'm responding back and work. You have to be mindful of that every day, all day. Every day, all day. It's sad that it's just a part of life now. We just but it shouldn't be. No. But it is. It's reality. It 100 percent is reality. I've been pulled over and like, man, okay, here we go again. Where but, are you going? Okay. Does it matter where I'm going? Here's my self-reflection, though, first of all. Do you feel like that we, as Black people, African American, whatever, contribute to the emasculation of the black male, even black men themselves. Oh yeah. So how can we complain about something that we contribute to? It's like that's the self-reflection. It's like we're brainwashed. We they figure if they flood us with all the images, all they have to do is continue to keep flooding us with images. Look at the rap. Even rap. It wasn't 
look, and I, I have nothing against the LB, that community. Absolutely nothing against them. I said, but these little rat boys, you they carry purses. I, I just, I don't get it. I, I, if this is just my perspective, and I'm going to get my perspective. I feel like in today's society, everybody is about getting that 15 minutes and how can I parlay that 15 minutes and if I do something outside of the box that's going to draw attention that's going to get me my 15 and after I get my 15 now it's all a matter of me figuring out how to build I don't think people are thinking about how whatever it is that they chose to do or say is affecting people as a whole as much as it is. I'm just being me. You can't be mad at me for being me and I'm getting my 15 and I'm making money from it. But now it's causing people to look differently. Mm -hmm. Well, just because he out here in a purse and all don't mean you can step to me and you, you know what i'm saying just because he he did it don't mean i'm doing it. Mm -hmm. and people want to apply that across the board it said it's in the music tvs even commercials all parts of the emasculation of the black man A absolutely mm -hmm. I, I i i agree and i mentioned this friday in the fact that grown up with seeing gay males on TV. Mm -hmm. Seen them? Yeah. Even as little kids, like we grew up with them. But we always saw, most of the, I won't say always, most of the time what we saw were gay white men. Mm -hmm. There was nothing ever really over the top flamboyant about that gay white man. You knew he was gay because he said he was gay. Mm -hmm. They told you he was gay. Right. But he never really, he may have had some feminine ways or did certain things, but he never came off right. over the top. Still to this day, I can't think of it. Somebody please correct me because if y'all can find a movie, commercial, television, whatever, that has a over the top flamboyant gay male character, now, I ain't talking about those in entertainment like, you know, uh, Boy George and all, yeah. all of them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about on a regular TV sitcom or in a movie. I, I can't even really think of one off the top in a movie that they just came out over the top and extreme like they show the black gay male. Now, I can't really... I don't ever remember a sex scene with a white gay male couple. Now you see the black black and Hispanic gay males on there. Oh, they all locked in passionate kisses, have, you know, speed old, butt out, like, it's all about sex. P. Valley, come on now. Yeah. Even the thugs on P. Valley doing gay shit. <laughs> come on now. You know what? I've never seen P. Valley. I saw two episodes and I said I can't do it. I, I, I've never seen it, so I don't. Oh, let's see. Demetria says, I can agree with Rick. I also think it has a lot to do with little black boys being rises without, oh, excuse me. I'm assuming that means raised without yeah. fathers. My son no longer talks to his, excuse me. Oh, no, y'all. My son no longer talks to his black friends about things like wanting to grow up have a job and family because they call him a simp. He's 10. He's got to be a thug or yes. Yeah. I, I, yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Because we put out there as a society, as a people, being a thug is where it's at. They're idolized. They're worshipped. That's what you should aspire to be. But hell, all they see is that's what the women want. 
So start exactly. off young. That's what they're going Exactly. Goes back to the chick with why you didn't pay for my 18 friend that came for my birthday. Don't nobody want no broke ass snicking. So if you ain't slinging dope, got your rap, you know, career blowing up, you know, there's a running joke. I can't even talk. Joke about every black man once he hit his 40s about to start his rap career. And I'm <laughs> like, come on. We add to the stereotype. So it's difficult to take a step back and want to fight it. Damn, but we add to it ourselves. Yeah, shit. We add to it ourselves. And it's sad that Demetrius Child got to feel like he can't talk, of, talk about realistic things like having a family and growing up and, you know, getting a good job. That's unheard of. Who does that? You get TikTok famous. You know, you get a rap career, you be a thug, you kill somebody, shoot somebody, you know, you, you do all of these different things. That's better. You can make more money. That's quick money. What are you talking about getting a job? Ten. That's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. But it's reality. It's reality. Black family is no longer a positive. I agree. Yeah. I agree. We don't even have any, at least back in the day, we at least had a, a few uh, good role models, positive black families. I mean, even though Bill Cosby ended up, <laughs> you know, but we still yeah. had that example of a healthy black family. Yeah. And people used to be like, ooh, I want to strive to be like that. I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer. My kids going to go to college. They're going to do all of these things. Now, what do we see? Family business. You see all them reality TV shows. Yeah. Shit. That's what we see. That's what we strive for. This is what I expect. This is how I want my life to be. Because if that's what they're doing, then I can do it too. That's what we see. That's our expectation. Big booties and lots of money. Yeah. Big booties and lots of money. That's I haven't seen so many twerk. If you my TikTok, you just keep if you get in that rotation, and I'm like, it's nothing but twerk videos. Yeah. Ed says, thug or athlete seems to be all they see. No doctor, no lawyer, no politician. Right. 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 And I mean, come on. We had a black president. Can we strive to be something more? You know what I'm saying? We can, we've proven that we can be more. But we hold our own selves back. We mm -hmm. add to this emasculation of the black man. Mm -hmm. We add to it. And we promote it. We promote it. And as dude said in the clip, oftentimes seen as lazy. Think about all the comedian jokes. But I always complain about all I heard one other day. I want to work with the Mexicans. We can make you look bad. They, you know, they don't want to take breaks and all that. Black people, they go on break. They, they break break. Yeah. You go take 15 minutes, you're gone 45. But you know, the ones I know that do that. They have to work double hard to catch back up. But they, and then complain when they get in trouble. <laughs> well, uh, majority of the time, you know, I work at union plant, so I have to be in that fighting for them. So. Man, <laughs> it, but, it's, but it's ridiculous that we have yeah. that mentality of how can I get over? How can I do? The least amount of work to get paid the most amount of money. Yeah. I can't even fight that. But I but all of I know a lot of brothers that are not like that. I do too. I know a whole lot of them that are not like that. But 
but they get hurt because there's so many more that are like that. Yeah. There's more. I, I feel like there's more that are like that than they're, that they're not. Mm -hmm. That they're not. But I know a lot that are not only because I choose not to associate with the other. So the most of the men in my circle have that same viewpoint that you have of like, damn, we 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 fighting an uphill battle, mm -hmm. and it's our own people that sometimes that's digging the dirt off from under us as we sliding back down here. Demetria says he wanted to be the mayor from age five until last year because he knew of black mayors. I go out of my way to make him see a wide variety of what's possible, but he still wants to be accepted. So now he keeps asking if he thinks he can make it in the NBA. Oh, that breaks my heart. That's horrible. That breaks my heart. Because that baby should be able to openly aspire to be mm -hmm. a mayor if he wants to be. If he wants to take a political career, he should be able to take a uh, make a I can't even talk. I'm so tongue tied tonight. I need to let me calm myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really like this subject has really got me upset. But he should be able to, as a child, express himself openly without being bullied for doing something. Or making feel, making himself feel like he's less than because he wants to be more. I just, I'm grown. That's horrible. That is. Dallas says, if we could learn to stick together as a race instead of chopping the next person down due to jealousy, we'd definitely be a star. Ooh, I 100% yeah. agree with you, Dallas. Crabs in a barrel mentality. Crabs in a barrel. And because if somebody you know has made it, you why do people get so jealous of them? I'm not I'm like, jealous, I'm happy for yeah. you. Tell me how you got there. Let me ride your coattail, and hopefully, I can find somebody else behind me. I'm gonna pull up as I move up. Just, but no, no, we gotta stab one another in the back. Try to make you look bad so I can take your job mm -hmm. instead of trying to figure out how you got there. I've had that happen several times. But this is, again, this show is about self reflection. I love my black people. I don't want nobody to feel like I'm, I'm anti black because I'm not. I 100% love my black people. I love my black men. I only date black men. Never in my life have I ever considered dating outside my race. I love my black men, and it hurts me to see the way you guys are prosecuted in society just for being black. Mm -hmm. For no other reason than the color of your skin. But as Dallas <clears throat> said, we have to come together as a people and stop wanting to point fingers mm -hmm. and blame somebody else because we're adding to this ridiculousness. It's, it's crazy. I don't. I I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. And again, I keep saying it, and I've said it on other shows before. Oh, to me, that change lies in the hands black female. People do not understand the role and the, the major role oftentimes people miss it. The major role that the black female plays in black society. Women are so focused on equal rights and I can do this and I can do that, that they 100% miss 
the need and the role that they play. And the guy, and y'all, I didn't play. I should have went and grabbed that clip because I went back and watched. I didn't watch the whole podcast. I watched like the first 30 minutes of the podcast that that clip was taken from. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said, that he kind of run on. I figured it. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I see your I see your point. I see your point. Okay. <laughs> but something that he said really I think a lot of people miss. And actually me and my ex were this way. He said and he because I say all the time marriage is a business. People yeah. don't understand that it's it's a contract. Yeah. This is, you entering into a contract with someone. Okay, marriage is a business, and as he said, it can't be for one CEO. Okay, can't be two, can't be but one CEO. Mm -hmm. And so, do you want to be CFO, COO? What (laughs) other role do you want to play? But there can only be one CEO. And he said he was the CEO of his family unit. Of his company, yep. okay, but his wife was the CFO, yeah, okay. And then for those people who don't know what the CFO is, the chief financial officer that was her. Her role was to nurture and grow the family. Yep. He brought the money in. You take what I bring in. And you nurture and you grow the family. Now, where I whew, when he said that if she ain't gotta work, but if she wanna work, you gonna make your little money. I don't need your money. That's what kind of got me. It's like, ooh, ooh. But I see his perspective. Yeah. Because most strong women, because it doesn't take a strong independent woman, because he's like, oh, nah, she she make her own decision, like yeah. You know, when she need help, she comes to me and she seeks my advice. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I know she got it. Don't worry about it because I know she got it. Yeah. And if she need me, then she'll come to me and say, hey, you got this, this, this. Here. But still, understanding that I am. I was like, I can roll with that. I can roll with that because a woman's job, I 100% agree, is to nurture. I, the nurture, that's our role. Some of y'all. All women are nurturers in their own way. We are nurturers in our own way, 100%. That's our role. That's our job. And when we misunderstand our job, that's when the problem is. Oh, because oftentimes she want to be CEO. And he even said, which I love, he even said sometimes she take lead depending on what the skill set is. Yeah. If it's her skill set, hey, mm-hmm. she take lead. That's the type of relationship that a lot of people strive for mm-hmm. but don't have. And they don't understand the dynamic of it. That takes a whole lot of maturity to get there. But that 100% is a black woman understanding her role. But here's the key point that I want to make. Because remember what I said, when they, they don't understand the power. He said her job is to nurture and grow. Without growth, nobody is going anywhere. Not even the CEO. Yeah. Her job was even to nurture him. Mm-hmm. He even admitted. A lot of women can't be accepting of that role. But I'm but but that falls back into. We can't be accepting of it because we've been taught we don't have any choice but to be that strong independent and I can't depend on you as a black man 
So therefore, I'm not going to listen to you because I've been told all my life I can't depend on you. You are no good, lazy ass, don't want to take care of your kids, you know, bad baby daddy, having children here, cheating, all of these different things. That's all we see. Yeah. Why should I release those reins? How come I can't be CEO? You can't have your own house. But that's but that's the mindset. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, we got some comments. Hold on. Ed says, right now the world is willing to make the female the CEO. The men are reduced to mere joke. Uh, mere joke. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I agree with you. I agree with you. And that that to a lot of black women because remember I did the Angry Black Women show. We've been, we've been oppressed for so long. That now we finally coming to the forefront. Yeah. And people are recognizing and understanding and seeing us for the power and the things that we have to offer. And now you want me to be CFO so you can be CEO <laughs> when I've been running shit. And now you want me to step down and let you. Hmm. That's the mindset. What Demetra said, food stamps and affirmative action <laughs> was some of the worst things to happen in the black family. Baby. <laughs> Demetria, you know what the sad the sad part about that is I 100 percent agree with you. I 100 percent agree with you. Yeah. We're willing to get pushed. Hey, if I ain't gotta do nothing. I mean, some of them look at it. Why would they do? Why would I? I make more. I make more money staying at home doing nothing. <laughs> Ed said, along with Section A, absolutely, yep. absolutely. We've been taught you can rely on the system. Have a bunch of kids. Put your baby daddy on child support. All of these different things. That's what mm. we were taught. Live in the projects on Section A, girl. You ain't got to do nothing. Get them checked. Section eight, you pay two fifty rent. You get a bunch of kids. You are gonna get man. Sell them food stamps. All you gotta do is not have a man living with you. See, the system is set up. Yes. To break you up. You can't the have. Family. Yes. You can't have a man. I'm gonna give you all of this. Yep. I'm gonna give you food stamps. I'm gonna give you place to live. I'm gonna give you money in your pocket. All of it, but you gotta put that man on. On child support, and he cannot be in that household because once he come in, I'm taking away everything yeah. that I gave you. Which again teaches us black women to say no. You can't come up here because you're gonna mess up what I got going on. Yeah. And now I'm gonna look down on you because the system looks down on you. The system said, "Oh, you good for us? We put you on child support, and if you don't pay child support, you go to jail. I'm gonna put you in jail if you don't pay child." Support. So we do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We do it to ourselves. But here's the thing. To some of them so-called independent black women, if you on food stamps living on section living in section eight in the projects, depending on your child support and your food stamps, your welfare checking out, are you really that independent, strong black woman? Because you dependent on the system. You ain't independent at all. <laughs> no. But hell, uh, in their eyes, they are. No. No. And the first one to scream, I don't need a man. Yes, you do. Because you need that man to be beat down by the system mm -hmm. in order for you to come up. You need him. We do it to ourselves. How can you talk? I'm, I'm independent. No. You dependent on the system. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, because I know plenty of women who have utilized the system to move up. Right. Okay, right now I'm struggling. This is what I can afford, but I'm I'm gonna sit here for a minute because my focus is to do better. Right. 
that's different. But if you comfortable living off the system, come on, are you really independent? No, no, you're not, not no. independent. You're not independent. You're living on the system. Then here's the other thing, and I'm gonna say this to the independent women. Because this to me, I feel like, and I say it a lot. I say it a lot. But it 100% adds to the emasculation of the black man. That I don't need a man. I say it a lot. I say it all the time. I have a different perspective on it. But I definitely understand how it adds to that emasculation. Mm -hmm. I 100% understand. The difference is from my perspective because I see your struggle. I 100% see the struggle of that black man. But I also see the struggle that I have to get to where I am. Okay. So it's difficult for us independent, for us real independent black women. Because if I've worked hard to build myself up, get my degree, get my job, you know, I got a good job, got a house, I'm taking care of myself, like I'm not dependent on anyone. When you have those black males that come in to want to say, okay, happy for you, but I'm here now. And so, which is what I took offense to him when he said, if you want to go get your little job, you know, you're bringing your little money. That little shit. Yeah. You can't come in and try to dismiss my contribution. That's where I feel like the disconnect comes. When the man comes in, you can't dismiss my contribution and act like my little job and my little this. No, because I did all this without you. So you can't come in and try to pretend like what I accomplished means nothing. That's an insult to me. That, that and, and that's where I take offense because I 100%. Let me tell you, I know people feel like, and I do understand, I come across because I say all the time, I don't, I want one, yeah, but I'm not gonna pretend like I'm broken Again. just to make you feel needed. You don't, I'm, I'm guessing maybe a lot of men don't need, well, let me take that back. I was about to say, some of us do need to feel like we're saving. I'm sorry, but I can't help you be Captain Save a Hope because I ain't Captain Save. I don't need to be saved. But I'm serious. There are a lot of men like And I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you, but I don't need to be saved. I ain't that dude. And so, remember this show is about self-reflection, so I like to give different perspectives. And so, I feel like that adds to the emasculation because if you come in thinking you're trying to save me and I feel like I don't need to be saved, I'm going to look at you like, little dude. See? (laughs) Dude, you don't take your little ass on somewhere. Like, how you gonna come up and act like you're gonna save me? I didn't need to be saved. I don't understand why you feel like you got to come in here and save me. But see, you don't put that off in the beginning. See what it is. There are some women that that's they put that they put that out there in the beginning. So you automatically thinking just like men know the type of women that they want, women know the type of men. Absolutely. Ed, wait a minute. I want to go back to it. He Ed says that teaches the queen to be without her king. That's not godly. Sorry. I agree with you, Ed. I, I 100% am a true believer. I say it all the time. The man is the head of the household. 
I have no issues. I'm not going to pretend like I need you to come in here and save me. But if you want to come in here and take care of me, if you feel like you met me and you feel like I am worthy and you want to come and take care of me, take care of me all day long. But don't try to make me, you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. expect me to act like I needed you to say. If you want to come in here and take care of me, then I 100% welcome right. you coming in and take care of me. I'm not going to be mad. You think I'm going to be mad because you want to come in here and pay my bills? Hell no. Come <laughs> and pay them bitches. <laughs> Damn it. That means I can bank my money. That I'm going to take care of both of us. Like yeah. he said, shit. My role as CFO is to nurture and grow and if you paying all the bills and my mom is extra oh shit people finna be hating on us because we got to be <laughs> my baby always clean i'm coming in with bags <laughs> he'd be like baby you know when shopping again sure did sure did went shopping got you this i knew you like this we going on a trip like i'm gonna i'm gonna use my money to spoil us if you handle it, I'm using. I'm making sure that we're growing. Yeah. And whatever's extra, I'm spoiling us with it. We're gonna kick it. We're having a good time. You're gonna be like, shit, my baby done. You know, yeah. fuck us, we gone. <laughs> That's my mentality. Yeah. As long as you come in, you can't disrespect yeah. what I did yeah. on my own. And that's what I feel like happens sometimes. That black men want to come in and say, you think you did something, but you ain't did nothing because you, you didn't have me. I'm not going to take away my accomplishments to make yourself feel good. No, we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're not going to do that. So they need to change that mindset of that. And I think that's the problem that us independent women, because we're there for y'all, we want to yeah. support y'all. Like, I want to support my black man 100%. But y'all beat me down. <laughs> y'all beat me. Y'all beat me down. Us independent women who got your back, y'all beat us down. I can actually say I'm not like that. <laughs> you may not be like that, but I know a lot of them that are. Yeah. Because you immediately have that viewpoint of she ain't gonna listen. She ain't gonna follow. I don't want. I don't want that. That that battle. Okay, wait a minute. We got. I got comments coming in. I'm. I'm really trying to get to the guys. Dallas says that's why you are rare, Ko. <laughs> Everyone is not. Does not have that mentality. I, I. I do understand that everybody does not have that mentality. But that's where I want to get people to. Unfortunately, Karen. I can relate to this 2000 percent. Yes, I, I it's it's a struggle and it's difficult. That's my struggle with dating. Cause I can't pretend like I'm a damsel in distress just to make you, you know, boost your ego and make you feel good about yourself. I just I can't do it. It's not who I am. I'm proud of my accomplishment. And I can't. I can't dim, you know what, for lack of a, I cannot dim my light to make you feel like yours shines brighter. You shouldn't. I would want my woman, I guess I'm like, I'm a little different. I want my woman, I want her to be like, she's the shit. Right? Absolutely. I'm an extension of you. Right. And if yeah. I'm the shit, you the shit. Right. I don't get it. Cause I can't be with you if you ain't the shit. You see what I'm saying? That that's that's just my thought process behind it. Mm -hmm. But we as black females, we 100. percent I feel like we fan the flame. We may not have struck the match. The white male struck the match. Mm -hmm. The black <laughs> female fans the flame. And we keep banning that bitch hard. Hard. 
Well, hell, <clears throat> well, hell look at we, men have a little bit to do with that too. Look at what's his name, Russell Wilson. I listened to them talk so much trash about him. I was like, and he ain't done nothing but supporting his family. Mm-hmm. To me, he's a good example of a family man because yeah. most you really like you hear other people on social media talk shit about him, but you don't hear anything like in the media, media yeah. bad about Russell Wilson or Sierra, even one yeah. of them. But people, you're right. People don't want to. People don't want to see that. But at the same time, would you say Russell Wilson? Russell, I can't even call him. Russell Wilson is adding to the emasculation of the black man because you know he, the flowers. You know he sometimes dresses different. I have to say, he definitely is that positive father figure, yeah. that male, like, he's taking care of house and home, his woman, but he also has that, got that feminine side to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. See, that's another example. Is that the reason why? Because I'm going to tell you, most of the people who go after him are black men. Oh. Is that the reason why? Because he is in touch with his feminine side? That most black males see him like he's part of the problem with the emasculation of the black man? I would hope not, but I don't see it like that. It's a matter of perspective. Because that, most of the time, that's what he gets hit with. Oh, Sierra got him dressing this way. Look at him, he this and he that. And like, there is something wrong with him because he's willing to please his woman. Yeah, look at the way you see him wearing dress he open and allows his son to express his feminine i mean the, the son is trans i think or well yeah he's gonna be some but you know it, it's 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 a lot of 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 things and different factors that play into it now let me say this i, I have to go back because I, I have to say again, I 100% have no issues with the, the J, the, the LBGTQ community. I, want, I love y'all. I really do. I just feel like that the representation that I see in the TV, on TV and in the movies and all of that is not always a positive right. representation mm-hmm. when it comes to the black male. And that's my issue. Why? If you Because I know plenty of gay black men. Yeah. I even know some that, that you know, that, that like to dress as, as women to train. I, you know, but, but they don't act like what I see represented on TV and in movies mm-hmm. and all of these different things. So that's my question. Like, why do they have to be represented that way? That adds to that negative viewpoint of the black male because you don't you don't show the others that way. So I don't I don't get it. It it, it makes no sense to me. But I ain't gonna get on my soapbox. I think I did good, but not with not getting on my soapbox tonight. Cause we are we are rolling up on an hour, y'all. Okay. I know, cause we just been talking. We we rolling up on an hour, but I, I really 
I really feel like that we as a black community have to take a step back and really look at the role we play in the downfall of our own society, our own people. We are our own worst enemy. Oh. I'm going to tell you, and we're going to get off of here, but I'm going to tell you, I saw I saw a TikTok that it was it was a part of an interview with a black woman that uh, that had a shooting at a school, and so she had come up to the school because she had received a call that her adopted mm-hmm. son had been in. in was, in the shooting and had possibly killed. And she was so nonchalant. Well, yeah, they told him, yeah, you know, that they he might be dead. You know, but we used to that. We from Compton. You know, this this ain't this ain't nothing. You know, it happened. She showed no remorse. Like then said she was referenced repping some crib yeah because i'm crip and and such and i was like wow on tv don't do that you on the news like come on man you on the news and even when the when the reporter attempted to give a more positive viewpoint where i hope you know that everything's okay i hope your son is all right and she's like but no they said he probably dead he dead and I was like, damn. We don't think about the perspective that we're setting for those people on the outside looking in. Because if we think in that way, looking at it like that, damn, imagine how other people are viewing us. Like, we as a people have got to come together. Mm-hmm. And it starts with us. It starts with the black female. We can make that change. We can make that change. Which is why I am starting. We're going to get off of here. August the 7th. We'll be at Big Love Smoke. Mm-hmm. Talking about a journey of self-reflection. Uh, and how to start people on their self-reflection because it's time to start opening up people's mindsets and viewing things from a different way Mm because we got to stop complaining about shit that we add to. You can't complain about something you add to. That's ridiculous. But y'all, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for tuning in. I hope... Feel like I don't even know if it really touched on. It's it's a it's a it's, it's a broad yeah. subject. It's a big subject. It's a big subject. But really and truly, I feel like it, it begins with self-reflection, a true self-reflection. People understanding the role that they play in. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Folks don't understand the role. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. We're gonna get off of here, y'all. Ooh. I'm going to tell you, I'm actually, I feel like I'm still recuperating from having the grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get up. Oh, uh, Red Wine Conversation t-shirts. If anybody is interested in the t-shirt, t-shirts at $25, $5 plus shipping and handling. Uh, send me a message if you're interested in getting a t-shirt and uh, let me know. We will have t-shirts if I have any left. I will have t-shirts at uh, Big Loves. I'm working on that flyer. Got to get the flyer up and out. But thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Thank you guys for commenting and participating. Love you guys. See you next week.